The Road to Mac Stock with David Ginsberg. This is Mac Voices. This week's Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Collide is an endpoint solution that uses the most powerful untapped resource in IT, end users. Learn more at collide.com slash Mac Voices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, a lot of us are looking forward to going to Woodstock, Illinois in just a few weeks for MacStock. Uh, this is a Road to MacStock episode where we're trying to talk to at least all of the presenters that are going to be speaking at this year's MacStock. This time around, I don't know, we have this guy named Ginsburg. I'm not sure I really know him very well, but we're going to see what he has to say. <laughs> Dave, how are you? Hey, doing great, Chuck. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I Ironically, I, I had thought the other day when we, you uh, said you wanted to do this, I wanted to go back and watch the very first time I was on with you, Mac Stock 2016, because you didn't do the, the, road stock, the road to Mac Stock the first year because it was so new. And I said, boy, have I aged. <laughs> That's the first thing I saw. <laughs> yeah, uh, but well, uh, uh, just going back and, and just, I, I remembered that very vividly. That uh, it was just, we've had some exciting times, and yeah, it's, I can't believe it's been seven years that, that we've been doing this and been together and have known each other this long, too. Uh, so, uh, hats off to Mike Potter and then Max Doc because this is uh, this is great. I'm looking forward to this. Well, I, I listen, it after that very first year, I think it became something that we look forward to every year, and then unfortunately. We had the lockdown situation, yeah, and that changed things a bit for a little while. And hopefully, we're we're ten, tending yeah. back towards something that's a little more normal, if there is any more normal anymore. Um, you know, it's yeah. You you were a speaker, uh, I guess, for all the in person Mac stocks. Have you? And one of the virtual, yes. I guess, too. Yes. I don't think I did any of the virtual ones. So there was twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one were the two virtuals. Um, because uh, I was, Mike really needed some help, and I was happy to do it. This 2020, obviously, we was we were fully virtual, and then 2021, we had the partial where we then unfortunately you couldn't make it, but uh, we I helped him out just with the uh, logistics and then the technical side of things on both on, in both those years. So, which which was great. I, I it, it kind of gave me a little bit of a break of being you know because I enjoy both and I, I do that in my career too. So I do both. So that's it was kind of fun to do that. But uh, uh, but yeah, no, I spoke at all of the uh, in person ones you know up through 2019. So. Yeah, I forgot you went, worked the technical side um, for the, for the virtuals, and I guess the second virtual yeah. was like sort of partially kind of in person, um, and in person, yeah, I couldn't but, make it. But we had a lot of mostly virtual, yeah, mostly virtual. I no one spoke. Well, no, actually, Mike Schmitz did speak uh, uh, in person per se, but it was all streamed, right. of course. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, that was, I hated the fact that I couldn't make that one, but there were some family issues going on that, you know, when those things come up, sure, you just sure. all the plans get canceled. So, but that's the past. Let's let's talk but, about uh, you know moving yeah. forward here. Um, so I haven't been given any information on what any of the speakers are speaking about. So I've got to ask, what is your topic for this year? Well, I, I kept it with the uh, with the premise of play. That was what uh, when I first was going uh, when I had first submitted this this uh, talk in 2020 before we couldn't do it. So I kept it. So it's been it's two years in the making now. <laughs> um, and what it's going to be? It's going to be about uh, uh, consuming media. Uh, and uh, really, uh, what I'm gonna, what I'm calling it is just uh, how we play music, how we how we do with podcasts, and how we work with streaming services. And I want to kind of give a spin on my spin on what what all those do for us as far as how we consume all that all that whether it's music podcasts uh, streaming services such an explosion in the last two years uh, three years now since the last time I've I've sp spoken and uh, this is uh, I thought this was a good topic and uh, and be able to go into a deeper dive of it as well because of course we're still following the rule of the twenty minutes for the for the uh, the first presentation and, we'll, and each of us will have a deep deep dive which uh, those are a lot of fun um, but I thought those three core items in 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 media and and fitting into play um, is going to be a lot of fun to talk about. Okay, so I'm you're catching me cold on this. Um, 
And I think it's it, it sounds like such an obvious topic, and yet, uh, for reasons that I won't get into here, um, I recently sort of re-examined my media consumption, the way I the way I listen, watch, whatever, yeah. and was kind of surprised at some of the some of the things that just it, they just kind of evolved, they just sort of happened, um, and now mm-hmm. I've I determined that gee. I don't consume media the way I used to. Some of it was brought about probably by the lockdown, some just by the evolution yeah. of the technology. So, I, you know, and sure, I mean, look, streaming changed the game for video, but um, that's, a, that's, a, that's part of it that keeps evolving constantly, it seems. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 we look at the uh, services since I uh, this Apple TV Plus didn't exist when I originally proposed this. So there's there's going to be even a lot more uh, uh, services that didn't even exist when uh, I proposed this, and uh, it's going to be a lot more fun. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It's it's just everybody. I think everybody's tastes have, have have changed. You know, look at what happens to Netflix. Netflix is laying off people. They're losing subscribers. You know, so there's a lot of change in this. Uh, in this industry, as far as uh, those uh, those are, you and I both like love Star Trek. So, you know, um, uh, Paramount Plus is doing gangbusters because everybody wants to be able to watch Star Trek and a lot of the other things they're offering. So, um, so I never thought I'd be pers- pers- subscribing to all of these different services, but I do because they're just you know each one of them has something that that is interesting to me, and I, and I think it's kind of the same with a lot of other people, you know. So. You know, David, I think you're right. I mean, you bring up um, Apple Plus, Apple TV Plus, and Paramount, um, and th- the competition for the eyeballs is one thing. The competition for the dollar is another, because now there are so many streaming services, and there's so many streaming services with original content. I know one of the big discussions, and I don't want to get into your co- your, your uh, topic, but you know, one of the discussions I, we've had on on some of the shows we're both on. The idea that, you know, back catalogs seem to be the way to go because people wanted to watch old favorites. Now it right. seems to be the focus is shifting on to new original content and what that means, you know, in, in today's market for when you have X number of dollars to spend. Are you how much how much of your monthly entertainment budget are you going to spend on a streaming service that will let you consume hours and hours and hours per month? as opposed to maybe taking a, a healthy piece of that entertainment budget and spending it on a visit to the movie theater for one, two and a half hour movie. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, all during, during the lockdown, you know, all these, a lot of movies stopped. I mean, there was no movies at all. So it was, it was streaming or, or not. So that I think really was a big bust. Again, I don't want to go into what I'm going to talk about, but sure. Um, that, I think that itself is going to be, is, is going to be something that, uh, that really, matured a lot of these streaming services I mean, now in the movie theaters you you know i, I still want to go see top gun maverick and i haven't gone to see it yet because i'm still a little nervous going into a the- movie theater because you know because still still people are getting COVID out there so uh so i'm hoping i'm, I'm just going to kind of wait and what, let, wait until it gets hits streaming and i'll probably enjoy it just as much uh from my the comfort of my own home here so um but not only am i talking about streaming or video uh, services i'm going to be talking about podcasts too podcasts have become just a huge thing now you're seeing so much more mainstream uh media doing podcasts i mean think about when we we both started our podcast and you know, obviously you started a lot before, earlier before than i did but uh how how uh mainstream media could just could care less about podcasts now they're that's the biggest thing in the world to them. And, you know, with Sirius XM buying uh, Conan O'Brien's thing and a lot of other, uh, other of these mainstream services are ending up on Spotify. So it's just, it, it's just interesting to see where this goes. And I think, I think my spin is going to be just to get people educated even more to understanding all the services that are out there. And there's so much that you can consume. You can only pay for so much, but and I'll be the first to admit, I, I probably pay a little too much for some of these services, but um, I do have, <laughs> You know, all the devices too to, to prove it to having a Roku and having a, a Google TV and having an Apple TV Plus and and just because I like to play with that stuff, but uh, that that's what keeps me educated and all, and I'll bring that that knowledge to to this to this uh, talk uh, and I think I think people will enjoy it. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Collide. 
Collide is an endpoint security solution that uses the most powerful untapped resource in IT, end users. Old school device management tools like MDMs force disruptive agents onto employee devices that slow performance and treat privacy as an afterthought. Collide does things differently. Instead of forcing changes on users, Collide notifies your team via Slack when their devices are insecure and gives them step-by-step instructions on how to solve the problem. By reaching out to employees via a friendly Slack message and educating them about company policies, Collide can help you build a culture in which everyone contributes to security because everyone understands how and why to do it. That makes for a stronger security now and a stronger security future. You can meet your compliance goals by putting users first. Visit collide.com slash macvoices to find out how. That's collide, K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash macvoices. Thanks to Collide for supporting this edition of Mac Voices. I, now I'm kind of excited about it because I think I think you're right. Um, podcasting has changed things. Um, you know, we've seen the, the Apple versus Spotify thing, the... Uh, I can't think of the, oh, gee, this is terrible. I can't think of the phrase. Um, but the idea that, um, exclusivity, thank you. I finally got it. Right. You know, things are exclusive <laughs> to Spotify. I brought it to you. <laughs> yeah. 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 So they're, you know, they're behind a paywall and, you know, you, or at least behind the Spotify interface. Um, and you know, that is controversial at, at best. So, um, and we yeah. we haven't even touched on streaming music services during this discussion. So there's there's a lot right. of meat to this particular topic. I don't know. Wish I'd have thought of it. Twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, twenty minutes is going to be uh, tight to to get to, for me to cover those three. That's where my core, the three core places I want to focus. But I want I just I'm going to bring bring some some spin to it to keep it you know keep it simple. But I think the fun thing will be I think what people will enjoy is the deeper dive is being able to go into all those services, get a little more details uh, and uh, and learn that though. But yeah, I've been podcasting now what 6 to 6 years now and then obviously you've been a lot longer than me, but uh I uh I've seen quite a change too, but I also see I see some growth in the future for for at least my podcast and and I get get a good decent amount of listeners, which just makes me happy, but uh I think people are still interested in listening to podcasts. They, they're, they're more so than ever. And I think we're, we're in a good place to, to continue on with this. And some podcasts don't last five episodes, but and I've lasted over 200. So there's, so I, some, some, some people are listening. So I, I continue on just cause I know that they are. So, uh, but that's with any, any, any content on the podcast side of things is, is that as well. And then, like I said, services like Sirius XM is, is get, they got into the podcast business, buying up, uh, uh, buying up uh, Stitcher and some other services. And they're, they're bringing podcasts over and they bought Conan O'Brien, of course. And, um, and, and so it's, it's just, I think, I think it's gonna be a fun topic. Definitely. Think, I definitely think it is. Yeah, I, and and now there are podcast studios out there that that's what they do. They produce uh, limited series podcasts. Yeah. Um, I know Wondery is one that uh, produces a number of things that I'm I always find intriguing because they're usually a little more business oriented. Um, but you know they're they're good. They're entertaining. Um, they they combine some information with entertainment, and so yeah, it's it's very much. Yeah. If if you don't know what we're talking about, folks, come in and hear David's session because there's a lot more to yeah. this than you might might just think of. You know, I, I stick my my AirPods in and hit play on Apple Music, and <laughs> what else would I do? You, there's a lot. There's a lot. It's a, I mean, uh, True Crime is so hot right now. It's inc- incredible how how insanely popular True Crime pe- people are. Just like Crime Junkies is the one of the ones that comes to mind. Is is one of the hottest of all of those podcasts, and they come up with all these different crime stories. And uh, you know, I have family members who love love listening to that all the time, and that's that's fun. But again, that's what's great about podcasts. You don't have to be at the mercy of of mainstream media, or mainstream uh, TV, or, or even uh, uh, audio for that matter. You, there are so many different topics, and you might find a podcast that interests you. You know, we're in the tech space, but then the tech space is crowded, no question. There's lots of it out there. 
but you know, you got to have you got you got to have a a host that's good at what they do, and and and, and people enjoy listening to that host and uh, and and bringing the engagement and the fun to listen to a particular particular show. So, I'm noticing now too a lot of shows, you know. Uh, notably, I think uh, the show Hacks on HBO Max, and um, I, I can't remember which other one I was watching. They have they all have companion podcasts now, so which I kind of thought was cool because you know if you like the show, I mean, I, I guess I guess Star Trek does it too with the Ready Room and Will Will, Will Eaton. He he extend, he extends a lot of finding all the extras of what's going on on show, uh, and and they weren't really doing that over the over the. Uh, uh, l- earlier years, um, but now I think people are f- starting to see that. Uh, boy, this this is a good idea. Let's have a pet companion podcast. Have the actors come on and actually host the show, uh, one show, and do it. And um, it, it's it's definitely uh, it's definitely doing a thing. I mean, our friend Kelly Gamont doing uh, doing the podcast about Ted Lasso. I mean, people are just there's there's fans of shows. They're doing their own shows, and not necessarily the main the actual artist of the, of the actual show. So it's it's really become just a, f- a hot thing right now. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm so tempted. I want to get into this discussion, and we don't want, want to do it, but I, know, I will say I this. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I think, I, I think you're absolutely right um, that podcasting now, people have, have figured out what podcasting can be. It's not just, you know, one or two people sitting down in the kitchen or their bedroom and talking into a microphone. You know, it can actually serve a purpose, a, a niche purpose, as something as niche as you know being a companion to a TV show that generates you know a lot of interest um, the the true crime stuff I mean yeah I'll call it out enormous um, what is that? I think it's Dateline on NBC I mean that just seems like yes. the same thing over and over and over but if, if you start too. That's yeah <laughs> yeah but if you if you dig into certain other aspects of the true crime stuff, there's some really great stories out there, and it doesn't necessarily have to be you know somebody slept with somebody else's wife and then they you know one of the three got oh, killed. Oh, no, these are actual murders and and crimes and and but like 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 crime junkies is I keep bringing that up because it's just, it's such the most popular of them, of them all. That they, these these gals spend a lot of time researching and 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 pr- providing a lot of information you're never going to find out about on those mainstream shows like Dateline 2020 and those things because um, these people really dig in deep are very passionate about about that topic. They got a lot of fans. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so so podcasting is no longer if you thought if if your opinion of podcasting or if you thought you knew what podcasting was from five years ago, ten years ago, you know, it's more than that now. It's it's more and it's a lot different. And you know, I would definitely encourage anyone to go and check some of this stuff out. And again, David's session will be a great way to start that process. So one thing I think it's only fair that you provide to the attendees is a list of some of your favorite podcasts, some of your favorite music, some of your favorite movies, some of your favorite streaming mm-hmm. services. Everything that we've just talked about, you know, I think it's only fair that you share with us, you know, some of what you consume. I probably don't want to know everything, but some. No, I think I'll give people a little taste. I will. I might put either uh, tease it a little bit in the in the uh, the twenty minute session, and then maybe expand upon just a little in the deep dive. But there's there's plenty of plenty to talk about. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, folks, Max Stock twenty twenty two is happening in um, in uh, McHenry, Illinois, at the McHenry County College. Um, David's going to be there. I'm going to be there. You're going to be hearing from other people that are speaking. Um, if we get the time and we can wrangle schedules, we may even have just some of the attendees uh, from past Mac Stocks on to talk about why it's such a great idea to go, because it really is a great time for the whole weekend. Uh, you just immerse yourself in Apple tech and Apple geekery, and it's just a blast that can't be explained until you experience it. David, I'm sure we'll be talking bef- between now and then, but I will definitely look forward to seeing you in Chicago. Yes. I look forward to seeing you as well. And make sure it is Max Stock 6. You remember he had changed that and we're not he's no longer using years as to identify the next session. So not that I meant to correct you, but uh and correct, correct away. away. <laughs> correct away. <laughs> yes. But it is yes. still so Max Stock Conference and Expo. It is. That's the website, maxstockconferenceandexpo.com. But it, we are now going to be uh, attending Max Stock Six. 
So it's the sixth okay. of the uh, of the in person events, even though there's been seven. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's COVID. COVID. What are you going to do? <laughs> Just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, David, before you go, tell everyone where can where they can uh, find you. You can find me at InTouchTheiOS at InTouchTheiOS.com. Like I said, I've been doing that podcast for the last six years now. Um, I'm also on with Chuck quite a bit on Mac Voices Live, so you find me there, as well as uh, the, uh, Mac Show on uh, Fridays on the British Tech Network, um, as well as uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel, which is at YouTube.com slash DaveG65, and uh, Twitter is DaveG65. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Excellent. Thank you, David. We'll see you, uh, see you at Mac Stock 6. Looking forward to it. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. We want to see you at Mac Stock 6. Um, so if you haven't signed up yet, MacStockConferenceAndExpo.com. There's still plenty of time uh, to get there, get your hotel rooms, and join us because we're sure going to have a good time. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.